Technology is the new frontier, and Finnish-American entrepreneur Mika Salmi is one of the pioneers. We're at the Leadership Summit Europe here on campus in Fontainebleau, and uh, Mika joins me now on INSEAD Knowledge. It's really nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. You've had such a, an interesting past, and you sit on a lot of boards, so you kind of have one foot in the entrepreneurial world, another foot in the establishment world. Your last big establishment role was with MTV as uh, president of Global Digital Media. Yes. You left that last year, but what did you learn after three years there? Well, it was actually a bigger role than M MTV. It was Viacom, which is a global company. Yeah. So I think the, uh, the hugeness is actually what I learned was that uh, previously I had only managed 300 people or so. Uh, and there I was managing 1,800 people. I also worked very close with the CEO. He was my boss. And I saw how he managed 10,000 people. And so the idea of managing a large organization that's far flung across the globe uh, it was not a mystery anymore to me after I was there. I, I saw how it could be done, and because of that, I have uh, no fear anymore. Not that I had fear before, but I have no uh, hesitancy to uh, potentially be either the CEO of a large organization or start a company that becomes a large organization. It doesn't doesn't bother me. So, so I've had this theory that the the, the guys with the, the pens and the plastic in their pocket were not cool enough to talk to the Hollywood guys, <laughs> and they didn't really want to talk to the TV guys. And so it's just it's almost a psychological thing. I mean, do you think we're getting over that barrier? Or? Somewhat. I do still think that people in Silicon Valley or the technology in general around the world feel that technology will solve all the problems. They say, look, well, this is the coolest technology. We should be able to get movies instantly everywhere, blah, blah, blah. But the movie business says... Well, that's a cool technology, but what about our business model? What about the way we actually need to make this thing work? Okay, so then what is the business model here? I mean, people always want to know, how are you going to make money off the Internet? Well, you can sell things on it. That's clearly a business model. But who pays for content? This seems to be at the <laughs> crux of what's going on. Well, I think that you know the, the kind of idea that there's one solution for everything is, is not going to happen. And one of the problems why you know, it really brought it up is that the music business, and for that matter, the print business, generally only had one business model. It was just like, that's it. I sell my CD or I sell my newspaper. Uh, maybe they had a subscription and maybe the CD business, even they, you know, they got some music money from the radio or something else. But generally, especially the big companies, they had very monolithic kind of business models. And I think uh, the movie business, TV business, always had much more... Uh, diversity in their business model. And I think that's going forward. You're seeing now even with the Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times, they have paywalls online. You may see some things where you pay by the article if you have a wallet to use. Um, I think the question is, you know, what your product is and how you then adapt and what ways you want to make money. I think that's going to depend a lot on, you know, what platform you're playing in and what your product is. I do think that the uh, that there will be ways for content to be paid for. Uh, there's also going to be pressure for content because there's going to be so many new types of content and, uh, and new creators of content out there that you know, in the past you might have said, well, it's just not high quality, people aren't interested in it and everything else. But, but that is all getting better and better and better. And so you'll see new types of content or new types of actual uh, originators of content who um, are thinking in a different way about their business model from this get-go because they don't have the legacy business model and they'll be putting pressure over there too. So uh, I, I'm actually very bullish on it. There's going to be very good content uh, and business models in the future. I just don't think that it's easy to say like it's going to look like this. So, I mean, I imagine you're out there doing that already. Can you, without giving away all your business plans, is there <laughs> something you can tell us about what you are working on that kind of might be? Oh, well... Um, I, you know, I'm on these boards and I advise a lot of companies, a couple of the companies, and one is uh, it's called Blip FM, and they, they are a Twitter for music. They basically, as you're listening to music, you can kind of share it with other people in real time, and um, they are kind of pushing the envelope on, on music sharing and, and real-time media kind of concepts, and I think they can evolve to other kinds of media types from there. That's, that's kind of interesting because uh, they run into all kinds of kind of gray areas and what they can do and can't do. And, the consumers love it. They have you know a few million people after a very short time using it, but it's very difficult for uh, uh, you know sometimes for the record labels and other people to go. This where does this really fit into our business model? So I, I've got my fingers in a few things that are kind of on the edge. I would say that will be interesting to keep track of you. <laughs> a lot of them don't go very far. Like I, I do this all the time, and six months later I'm like, yeah, that wasn't a very good idea. Next, so maybe one of them will actually hit, and you'll you'll hear about it. <laughs> and you continue to be optimistic. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I, I'm not so optimistic about the general world and uh, a lot of other big issues out there, but when it comes to technology and uh, entrepreneurship, I am. I think that uh, 
What I love about technology, and I think what is hard for a lot of traditional media business people to understand is that it never stops. There's no like, oh, now we have this screen called a TV and for the next 50 years we have to pump this program into this thing called a television. Because technology is constantly evolving, literally on a daily, weekly basis, there's something new twist on it, whether it be you know, the latest thing is obviously social media. All this stuff affects the actual end product and it's going to be constantly changing. I'm optimistic because that always creates opportunities. As it changes, the opportunities to come up with new ideas, how to uh, uh, create products or how to meet consumer needs with this technology as it changes. How did INSEAD help you to stay on top of all this technology or what, what did you learn here? The most important thing for me at INSEAD was that I, uh, I, I managed to find my focus and clarity on what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure when I came here. I'd been kind of part an entrepreneur. I'd started some small businesses. I'd been in the music business. I had worked for big companies. I was like, what do I want to do? And uh, I, 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 I honestly, and this is pretty embarrassing, but I thought, well, maybe I'll look at finance or, or consulting or something. And within the first few months of INSEAD, I thought, you know what? I don't think that's going to be for me. I'm going to have to just follow my own path again. And you know, I had literally, I think I had one interview while I was at INSEAD. No, no companies want to interview me. So I just knew I had to follow my own path. And I think that's what INSEAD gave me was the confidence to say, you know what? It's okay for me to follow my own path. I don't have to kind of go on the kind of normal road. And I'd say that's basically what I've done. Thank you very much Thank you. for sharing all this with us on NC Head Knowledge.